Hello and welcome back and today we're going to continue looking at Windows Storage Server 2016 enabled NASes from Buffalo. Today we're going to look at the Windows Storage Server user interface and what makes it different to other NAS platforms. Now there's this really, I'm going to break this video into two parts really. Um, I'll probably do the first part in this video, I might even move the second bit to another video. Largely the first thing I'm going to look at are the Windows components of Windows Storage Server and what's on offer to you. The second thing I want to show you, possibly in the next video, will be the Buffalo components and what extra has Buffalo included with this Windows Storage Server 2016 license. So straight away, as you can see from the desktop here that I've done, um, the system there, we are logged in. If you checked out our previous video, we're logged in to uh, a device here, the Buffalo device here. And straight away on screen, we can see our Buffalo hardware that's included. Uh, the amount of RAM, what we're connected by, all the relevant information, as well as a Windows Storage Server license up here. So this shows that's the device that we are on. Now, the user interface and the desktop looks uncannily similar to that of any other Windows machine. Let's be honest, if you've bought a Windows machine from down the road or installed it yourself, this is pretty much what you're going to look at. Down here we've got Windows Explorer, boo, and everything else is pretty familiar indeed. Now, if we go to the bottom left, it takes a few seconds to realize there are differences, but the main difference are here. At the top here are a lot of the more Windows Server equipped applications, things the majority of which you will not get readily available or indeed at all on a standard copy of Windows 10. Next at the bottom, we've got those Buffalo applications which do go a little deeper than that. But for now, let's have a look at that Windows Server application. So let's go for the first one. This is the biggest one. We'll probably spend the bulk of the video on this. This is the dashboard. This is your one point of access and control of this server and other connected server devices. So if you've got multiple Windows server devices on your network or even standard Linux based servers, they can be added, monitored and controlled via this dashboard and user interface. So from the top here, we can see a local server. Obviously that is the server that you are on. All servers are network connected servers. So these are servers on the shared network and all of their different events and stuff that's happening in the background of them. You might have seen that event earlier on the previous video. And this is the storage manager for both the device you are on and your network enabled storage. So options there, very user friendly and definitely presented in a Windows fashion. So remember, one of the main appeals that most users have when they're, look, when they're looking at Windows Storage Server NAS is, is because of the familiarity of the Windows platform. Maybe they've been running Windows Server for a while, you know, 2012, and they want to upgrade to a new version that is still just as adaptable and that can pick up their existing system instantly without a flash, uh, without a difficulty. So in here, we list the disks that are, are mounted, either remotely, virtually, or physically in your device, and the storage pools that live on individual devices as you create them. Um, the shares are obviously uh, network drives that you've shared, and that was that network drive that we connected to in the previous video, as well as iSCSI, you know, that's LUN targets, that sort of thing, where you can create new virtual disks too. And work folders is obviously when things are broken down into a much more efficient manner for the end user. So if we go back to here and we look at all of our servers, this at the moment we haven't patched these servers together. We're going to save that for another video, but this is where we can get real-time information about that server in terms of alerts and notifications if there are problems with one of the servers that we're monitoring. The local server here, once again, this gives us basically all of the information we're going to need, and a lot of these are configurable straight from here. So we can decide to turn the firewall on and off if we so choose. And again, a lot of these options, once they pop up, will seem very familiar, Windows Defender, Real Time Protection, will seem very similar to Windows 10 users. And that's because they've tried to marry the design of Windows 10 and Windows Server and bring them together. Past versions of Windows Server have been um, very separate in terms of what um, is presented and what's available on these platforms and therefore created this very high difficulty threshold, this learning curve, which has now been pretty much eradicated by, by the fact that if you know Windows 10 and you've got even a basic understanding of networking in Windows 10, chances are you can make your way around Windows Server 2016 very easily indeed. And again, all the stuff with updates and more. So back to that main dashboard. In this main dashboard, we've got a notification area up here. That all of these once clicked will open up a Windows Explorer window. So if you need help, what these will do is talk you through how to add 
different things. So if you want to configure the local server that you're on, add features, roles, and more. So if we go through this option to explain it, right now this tells us about all the different things you want your server to be able to do or be open to do, as well as enabling different users uh, and their abilities of what to do. So you can do different versions of the installation, as you can see, role base is basically installation would have to be completed by individual uh, members of your network, as opposed to remote, remote desktop in, um, installation, which is obviously not dissimilar to what we're doing. Um, so say we wanted to create a virtual um, hard disk or the server pool that we've created, I'm gonna select that, that's where we would do it. Next, this is where we assign certain roles. So these are where we create a role for users and tasks on this device. So if we go for file and storage service, nice and straightforward. And there we go, we can enable different features for this role. So again, a lovely degree of control and presented in a very chewable, user-friendly manner. I'm not gonna bother reading for all of these because I won't lie, I probably only know about 35% of them, but there's still lots of options there to build those servers and roles very quickly indeed. And again, all of this is capable, is completely possible on these Buffalo NASes. They're the only NASes right now that arrive with a fully licensed version of Windows Storage Server included. Other brands might tell you uh, they are Windows Storage Server 2016 compatible, fair enough, but you still have to buy the software, install the software, and install the software onto media that will keep it moving. These Buffalo NASes have already got it pre-installed, I believe, on an SSD inside. So, Lots of other options there about creating server groups, create the cloud accesses. That's what you're gonna to need to be able to access this server from outside your network, obviously with the right credentials. And that's where you add more servers to this bottom list. So if we try to add another server here, it would search our localized network for other active servers. So if we move out of that, we can look at what's new. And this is where it tells us all the new things that have been made available in recent updates and I believe these are the ones that will open up so we want to connect this server to a cloud service and wallop it will open up a Windows Explorer and talk us through the tutorial of how to perform that action nice and straightforward indeed and I still let's have a look there close I think this is what I get for using that does everyone else hate Windows Explorer I love Windows uh, Storage Server, but, you know, get a better browser. Get a better browser. Can't hold that against anyone. But we'll remove that from there. And, of course, learn more is where we get to learn more about how to utilize our device and things that we do or don't do. Now, at the top right, if we don't want to go through these options here, there is a breakdown of how to manage our server in a far more direct fashion. So all of those options we saw there, but we can flick, to, flick directly into those different um, options that we saw earlier on. In terms of tools, if we have created and enabled some of those uh, features and functionality, this is where we're able to do it. And all of these, it's very thorough indeed. Everything, everything from the usual features and functionality you find in Windows 10 with disk cleanup and defragmentation, such as uh, the iSCSI initiator, which lets us create those multiple iSCSIs and more. And of course, view is just going to change what we can see on the screen. And there's a big old help guide ready and available at any time. And that's the, that is the server manager dashboard. Everything else on this will seem a lot quicker. For example, uh, PowerShell. Now, for those that have utilized uh, Windows Storage Server in the past, you will know, or even Windows Server, I should say, you will know about the control and ability presented to you with PowerShell. It's a command line interface that lets you run uh, backend commands on your Windows Server. And for those that are more attuned with this level of control and this, you know, really minute, minutiae amount of control, this real breaking it down to the small component parts, will be very pleased. One, the PowerShell is still here and lovely and well presented and fast, but also PowerShell ISE. And what this has is a database of commands built into it, like a phone book, if you will, to keep things moving nice and quick, to double check your commands, to add commands nice and quickly. So you can insert commands directly into this device and then run any commands you want. So those commands will be ready and available as you see fit. Something that you would have to manually type in the usual interface of PowerShell. If we come out of those, 
we can have a look at the Windows administrative tools. And a lot of these, once again, will be very familiar to those that have used the Windows 10 machine. Moving forward, we can see Task Manager. If you really want me to click on that, if you don't know what a Task Manager is, I don't think you should be allowed to watch this video. Uh, control Panel, everyone knows Control Panel, although I do miss the old days of Windows XP when the options were a lot clearer. We'll go down there, we've got Remote Desktop, and this is if you want to connect to one of the uh, VMs that may be created and living on this device, or another remote desktop. As you may see from the top of the screen, I am indeed connecting via remote desktop to um, this machine. It just makes things easier, and I do recommend remote desktop even more than the likes of TeamViewer um, and, and any PC. An event viewer is where we get real-time information about the events on our server happening in real time and you can set up notifications and alerts we'll talk about it in the next video and lastly of course the file explorer you would it would be you'd be a no-brainer not to take advantage of this now remember the whole point of windows storage server is a server that can be utilized and accessed by every employee or every one of your family or anyone in any of your task members can access it this back end shouldn't really be designed for everyone to have access only a handful of people should have access to this back end. And although there are a number of key features for Windows 10 that are readily available and usable on this platform, this is designed to be the back end of your Windows server. And another reason why the Buffalo Terror Station uh, WSS 2016 model is such a big deal. A number of these arrive with HDMI ports and keyboard and mouse support, so you can have that user interface directly as you would for IRA PC or access it via any browser window on the network if you've got the login or even the cloud too. It is definitely the recommended Windows Storage Server device at this time. I'll be honest, the words Windows Storage Server have utterly lost meaning uh, so far. Um, now, on the next video, we are gonna talk about the Buffalo tools. It's gonna probably be a much shorter video, but these are the things that make another, uh, another compelling argument why the Buffalo Terror Station should be the Windows Storage Server now for you. It's worth mentioning that you can install Windows Server 2016 on most NAS, but it won't be as smooth as this, it won't be as quick as this, and it won't be as efficient. And more importantly, it will cost you a great deal more. And you'll probably have to buy a lot more of those cow licenses too, where you have to have licenses for adding more users. But otherwise, thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to buy your NAS from span.com. Do check out my overviews and articles on NAS Compares regarding the Buffalo Terror Station WSS series. And I will see you on the next video regarding the Buffalo tools included in your Windows Storage Server. Cheerio.